Premier League transfer talk, confirmed transfers, rumors, and top four expectations that need to land players like maybe Declan Rice. Declan Rice mm. to Arsenal, the most expensive British player in the history of Britain. <laughs> that is yep. a statement by Arsenal to win the title. They beat Man yeah. City to align Declan Rice. So Arsenal yeah. are going bold. I got to start with uh, them. <laughs> I, 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 hey, it makes a whole lot of sense to start with them. I am more Im impressed, maybe, or I am equally as impressed that Manchester City did not pursue until the mm -hmm. end. I am actually shocked. And it, it shows a little bit of restraint, I guess, um, in, in Pep Guardiola's camp uh, that they don't get into this. But it, it also equally surprises me that it was Arsenal um, that said, no, 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 there is no way in hell we are losing this one. Um, and you know what? If you're going to go after somebody, um, Declan Rice has obviously shown his consistency, his ability to be at the top of the Premier League game uh, for some time. He just needs the squad around him to show it. And uh, Arsenal is showing some big <laughs> ambition with this. And let's be honest, this is a, a third kind of season of, of incremental steps or maybe exponentially incremental steps up mm -hmm. by Mikel Arteta. Uh, you know, and they're back in the Champions League. Yes, they led the Premier League for the majority of the season. And yes, they could have put their hands on the trophy this season. And it feels like an opportunity missed. But by all intents and purposes, they... Uh, they hit their goal last season of getting back to the Champions League. And now it's to show ambition, and ambition is Declan Rice and Kai Havertz. And, you know, yell at me all you want. Yell at me all you want about Kai Havertz, but I still believe that Kai Havertz is going to be one of the signings of this particular offseason. I know it's early, but I believe he is going to be one of the signings because I believe that Mikel Arteta knows how to unlock what makes him special. Better than okay? Shelby's line? Well, Shobasly, I, I, oh man, Shobasly. That Trent Alexander a... Arnold 2 0 with Shobasly pinpoint passes. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it makes, it makes me tingle just thinking about it. Shobasly, uh, McAllister backed up by Alexander Arnold, maybe well, Fabinho. I don't know. But there is depth in that Liverpool midfield. And, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's tough, man. But it's I, tough. I, I, but, I, but, but going with what you said about Declan Rice, yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Mikel Arteta deserved the big splash to get Declan mm -hmm. Rice of 121 21 million euros. Champions Ooh. League football and competing against Man City, you must have options. Rice, yep. Havertz, Odegaard, that's the midfield that is going to start. And Arsenal mm -hmm. were desperate even more for Rice if Partey is leaving. So Rice, yeah. Odegaard, Havertz... Jorginho coming off the bench. Smith Rowe maybe coming off the bench. Fabio Vieira. So Arsenal needs adaptability and versatility. And another point, I, I think, with mm -hmm. adding, with I think Arsenal. No, Arsenal have signed Havertz. They've signed Declan mm -hmm. Rice. And I think they're going to get to Julian Timber, which will give elite center back depth. Arsenal will have Julian Timber, Gabriel Magalhães, and Saliba that started last season. And, and, like, for another option, they, uh, like, they, they have depth with Ben White. So, Arsenal centre-backs for next season. Julian Timber, Saliba, Ben White, Gabriel Magalhães. That is Champions League competing, too. They're ready. And that's what they need. So, I'm happy with yeah. these first three transfers of Arsenal on my end. Just respecting uh, that. Right. But, it, but it's, it's funny. Rice and Havertz, it's, it's... It's wonderful business. It's expensive business, uh, but it's wonderful business as of right now. Um, but I'm more impressed with with what Liverpool has done mm. and what they're mm. what they're going to do. I mean, if you're going to talk about uh, me putting down a whole lot of money on, say, a team, um, uh, th and this really isn't that crazy money. This isn't you know smart. This is smart money to put put down here. But come on, Jurgen Klopp. Uh, has already gotten the commitment to bring in who he wants to bring in with a midfield. If they shore up that defensive line, I honestly think like Liverpool and Arsenal uh, can duke it out for second place next season. Um, no and uh, I, I, yeah, well, it's it's going to take Manchester City slipping up. And frankly, I don't you know 
I don't know, until they prove to me that they are going to do that, uh, we got to see what their incomings are because they have yet to even spend except for Kovacic, which is like smart, smart business, frankly. Um, so I, I am, I'm immensely impressed right now. Those early leaders, if we're, if we're talking about a horse race, the early leaders in the, uh, the transfer wars of uh, of the summer definitely are Arsenal and Liverpool in my opinion at least when it comes to the Premier League. I maybe see and Chelsea. Business. Chelsea Chelsea are sticking to the plan. It's selling well, Chelsea season. are offloading. It's selling Chelsea season. are offloading. Exactly. They have not yet they have not yet shown that they can bring in somebody aside from Enzo Nicholas that will Jackson. have a day they have Yeah, but Nicholas Jackson is one half of a year as much <laughs> as I like him. I bet you weren't expecting that. Well, I love I Nicholas Jackson. But since sticking I, I, with but yeah. sticking with Liverpool, I just want to say, yes. Klopp, it's his first full season with no Champions yeah. League football. And naturally so, FSG had to go bold with investment. And bringing in McAllister and Shobozlai, that's the right moves that Liverpool have to do to be back in the mm -hmm. Champions League. I fully believe the biggest competitor to Man City next season it's Liverpool, baby. <laughs> but I'm not sleeping with Newcastle because Newcastle, I still think they might go bold with spending more than $150 million this yeah. this transfer window. I expect to see that. So, midfield options for next season. Liverpool in midfield will have Trent Alexander-Arnold for me ahead of Fabinho, but Fabinho more defensively. Then they have McAllister, Shobozlai, Jordan Henderson, Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones still cooking. A great loan with Fabio Carvalho. I see Liverpool mm -hmm. organized and with a clear intention of having a different season. Liverpool means yeah. business. I wanted to mention well, that. I can't well, decide they... with Shobos Lai. 70 million well, for Shobos Lai release clause. McAllister, 35 million. 100 yeah. million. That's what FSG had to do from the start. And seeing them it do is. that now, get a center back and a right back and things will change. Because Trent is yeah, a well, midfielder now. <laughs> but listen, but yeah, well then who's right back? Exactly, exactly. They have to get another right back. No, yeah, they have yeah. to get a right back because of Trent. But listen, I, I, I am going to say it. I'm going to say, you know, the, the quiet part out loud right now. But Soba Sly for 70 million, I understand you did what you had to do to secure the man. Uh, but um, that's a lot of money. And yes. I am a little worried about in injury proneness. I am a little worried about injury proneness. He has shown with RB Leipzig. Now he is every time he is in for RB Leipzig, they are a much better team. There's no doubt about that. I believe they he's he led Leipzig, even though he missed quite a bit of the season. He met uh, led Leipzig in chances created last season. Uh, Alexander Arnold, I believe they are right around the same in terms of chances created. So they're going to be definitely cooking in that midfield. But Sobislai is um, not quite a question mark, but he does have that history. It's he does true. have that history and 70 million two times two times what it cost to bring in McAllister um to not play Champions League football for a season that is really really interesting to me but it does show intent they had to overpay in order to get him in that particular context maybe a little bit like Arsenal had to overpay last season exactly. um to get people in so I understand it but when it comes down to it yeah that midfield um that <laughs> already addressing what was their insane weakness last year in terms of depth? Um, that is huge. It's a huge intent um, uh, dealt with for Jurgen Klopp as well. Um, and it tells you everything you need to know. And if they get Kefren Turam, um, it's yeah. it's one of my... It might not be the best midfield yet because we have to see how they work together. But my goodness, it, it might be one of the more fun ones to watch. If Fabinho right? ain't playing well, um, Kefren Turam would step in great defensive yeah. midfielder and offensively sure. liverpool if ev if there's no injuries offensively liverpool of they have insane options liverpool offensively has luis diaz number seven now they have gakpo mm -hmm. they have mo salah and then on the bench if they're not starting darwin nunes and duke jota that that is firepower and a lot of goals what? will definitely come from these five players and then when you have yeah, well. Lion Trent pinpoint passes, oh, it's going to be great. I really believe that Liverpool, with Shobos Lai, he's going to be one of the top assisters in the Premier League with no injuries. People will be mm -hmm. so impressed with the free kicks of this man. He's one of the best free yeah. kick takers in the world right now. I'll say that. Yeah. And, so Liverpool and what be hyped. And what he means to Hungary, too, and what he's done for Hungary um, is is abs absolutely impressive. And I got to say, what he's done at RB Leipzig 
uh, too, from moving on from Salzburg. He's he's gone up in that Red Bull, um, you know, that Red Bull uh, totem pole, if you will. Uh, but listen, Sobislai, I don't know how Leipzig do it every year, but they have to reinvent themselves every <laughs> year. Um, we haven't even talked about their best center back getting poached at some point in Whoa. the future, potentially, uh, which we will in a little bit. But Sobislai and Kunku, every year they have to reinvent themselves. You almost feel bad in some respects uh, from a footballing fan perspective. But Liverpool are definitely the beneficiaries in this instance. Um, and I, I do, do have to remind people, Liverpool obviously, as they probably should have, they ended the year on an 11-game unbeaten streak. True. And a lot of that came down to a tactical switch. And the the uh, am I smart enough to kind of Trent. walk you through what that is? No. But ultimately, what I do know is that these particular signings tell me that they're going to continue with that tactical overload of the midfield. Um, and that Sobislai and uh, McAllister partnership is going to be a massively, massively important part of this with Alexander Arnold as well. So I'm I'm excited and it's nice to feel excited again by Liverpool. It's it's right? I completely agree with you. And going with what you said with RB Leipzig, in this transfer window, RB Leipzig yeah. is sold in Kunku for seven, 60 million. They've sold Shobos Life for 70 and they might be selling Josh Kokvardiol for 100 million. That is 230 million done by RB Leipzig this transfer window maybe. Bold yep. deals. And if we count Konate and Upamecano with Shobozlai and Kunku and um, Guardiol, that is 300 mm -hmm. million that they have done uh, in recent sales. RB Leipzig yep. from doing the right decisions in scouting and investing in the right players with development too. Nagelsmann was yep. even there. Even coaches were yep. developed in, that, in, yep. in, in the RB Leipzig type. Uh, RB, RB Leipzig management. So it's... It's great deals, and I just want to say a top five list of most expensive British players ever. Declan Rice is now number one, 121 million. Then Jack Grealish, number two, 117 million. Number three, Jude mm. Bellingham, 103 million. Number four, <laughs> the biggest mistake, Harry Maguire, 87 oh million. And number five is Jaden Sancho for a 85 million. That I still, I'm not going to say he's a flop. But this is the biggest season for Jaden Sancho to prove himself. Mm. So, people, put mm. down below your Premier League transfers to watch. We want to see your comments. And don't forget to like this video.